Excel macros automate tasks for us. Macros allow us to perform things very quickly and they can literally save you hours and hours of time. In an earlier video, you'll remember that I copied in some data from uh, PayPal from my internet browser and after I pasted it in, I had to do some manipulation to the data to get it to where I could perform calculations on it. Well, while it is a whole lot of fun to figure out how we can do those kinds of things, you know, inside of Excel, it gets a little bit um, discouraging if you have to do that repetitively over and over again. Let's say that I had to grab this statistical data, you know, every day, and I had to do the same thing. I'd have to go in here and manually perform all of those tasks just to get the you no, know, you know, just to get all the data in these cells to where I could work with it. Well, it's that exact kind of thing that macros help alleviate. There's a couple of different levels with macros. We're going to be exploring in the next couple of videos uh, a very simple, low-level example of macros that simply records what we're doing and allows us to play back those tasks that we have performed. The trick to that is you have to have all of your tasks outlined perfectly, uh, very at least close to perfect, and then you record that series of tasks and you're able to go back and play it back. Beyond that, Excel also gives us the ability to become a programmer and go right into the code of a macro and manipulate it and we can do even more with that. I'm not sure how much I'm going to be able to get into that. Uh, but we might have a couple of examples at least. I could probably do a full four-hour course just on programming with Visual Basic inside of you know Excel utilizing macros, but I will at least introduce it to you. Before we get involved, though, in the actual process, there's a couple of things that I want to do. First, you might not have the Developer tab turned on inside of Excel 2007. And if you don't have the Developer tab turned on, then you don't have access to recording macros and playing them back and all of that. So if you don't have it turned on, right-click on the ribbon, go to Customize Quick Access Toolbar, and then on the left, go to Popular, and here you want to turn on Show Developer tab in the ribbon. Just make sure that that has a check by it, and that'll turn it on for you, and then click OK. And again, that's turning on this tab right here. Before we get into something as complex as what is required to manipulate this data and get it prepared properly, I'm going to go over to Sheet 2, and I'm going to show you a very simple example of creating a macro. Let's just say that I wanted to put some headings or something and then format them in a certain way, and I do this pretty frequently, so I'd like to be able to do it, you know, just spontaneously and have it happen. The great thing about macros is that they execute not in the length of time, you know, not real time, not as quickly as it took us to make the macro. It executes almost instantly. So on the developer tab, I'm going to select record macro. Then we give the macro a name and I'll just call this headings one. If we want, we can assign a shortcut key. So in other words, if I press control and whatever letter I put in here, that will run the macro. Uh, and that's really a pretty convenient way to do it. So let's do control O and then store the macro in either this workbook or uh, your personal macro workbook or store it in a new workbook. I'm going to go ahead and store it in this workbook. And if you want, you can put a description here, creates and formats headings. Now again, the trick here, after you click OK, the trick here is that when we're recording a macro, pretty much everything that we're doing is being recorded. What that means is that if you've got maybe extra steps, that's OK. It's not going to slow the computer down a whole lot, but you don't want to eliminate steps. In other words, don't skip anything. Sometimes when I'm recording a macro, I do find that I might add an extra step that wasn't necessary. But as long as it doesn't change the outcome, 
it's okay and don't worry about it. And you can actually go in uh, to the code directly and delete those extra steps. But adding in steps that you missed, that's a little bit more tricky. I want to record right from this cell. I'm going to type in my heading, title, and name, description, contact info, and we'll put phone number here. And I would like to resize all of these. I would like to select and format them. Let's go over to home. Let's make them bigger, and I should have done that before I resized them. Go ahead and resize them again. That's an example of an extra step that's not going to make a difference on the final outcome. Let's change the color of them to a dark blue and we can even underline them and if I want italicize them. That's basically it. Let's go back to the developer tab and I'm gonna click stop recording. That is as simple as it gets that you have just created a macro. When you record macros you are basically one level below programming. And you'll see later on when we look at a video of the code that is used to create this macro, you'll see what I mean uh, by programming. But you have essentially created a macro at this point. And all that we have to do, let's go to sheet three. I can click over here. And let's say I want to play that macro. A couple of ways I can do it. I can use that uh, shortcut key that we created. Or I can click on macros. Here is the current uh, list. There's going to be a list of whatever macros you have for this workbook. Uh, headings is the only one. Let's go ahead and run it. Watch what happens. Boom. I mean fast. Faster than I can even click in cell A1. It's already got it all done. Now you'll notice that I had had this cell selected. And it went ahead and went up here to A1 and started typing just like I did the first time. Well... That's because by default, macros record with absolute referencing. If you want to, you know, actually do it with relative referencing, you have to turn that option on. So let's go here and I'm going to click use relative referencing and now it's highlighted. So now if I record, I'm going to do headings relative. Again, I could do a keyboard shortcut if I wanted to. I'm going to put it in this workbook, and I'm not going to do a description this time. But I'll do the same thing. Title, name, description, contact info, and phone. And I'll highlight all of that. Let's do a little bit of formatting. And formatting is just an example of some of the things that you can do with uh, macros. Okay, we'll go with that this time. Go back to the developer tab and I'll click stop recording. Now watch what happens. I can be anywhere and if I play that macro, headings relative, it'll play it right where my cursor is. You know, whatever cell is selected. Even over here, I can play that macro again. Okay, because now I'm using relative referencing. Let's create one more sheet, and I want to show you what what happens if you use that keyboard shortcut. Okay, the same thing's going to happen, but you just need to see it actually in use. Do you remember what it was? It's Control O. <laughs> okay, so I specified Control O when I recorded the macro. So now if I do Control O, look what it does for me. Automatically takes care of everything. All right, so that is a simple example of recording and using a macro. In the next video, we're going to head back to this worksheet where we conquer this fairly difficult task of stripping out the USD and formatting this so that we can utilize it and perform some arithmetic on it.